Hello everyone, we are here to talk about how I cultivate carnivorous plants. So I thought I would start off, when I was about 11 or 12 years old, my dad helped me put in my first greenhouse window. This one is pretty good size, it is 5 foot by 4 foot, it has 3 layers, and at the time I cultivated everything from flytraps, nepenthes, and sericinia, all in this window when I was about 12 years old. At that same time, I had just started selling um, carnivorous plants to a couple local nurseries. They were super cool because if they got in plants that looked like they were about to die, they would um, actually give them to me. I would try and nurse them back to health uh, using this greenhouse window, and then I would sell them back to the nursery. So this, my parents thought, would last me pretty much my whole life, but little did they know how interested I would become in carnivorous plants. This one lasted me about three years, and then when I was about 15 years old, I constructed my first lean-to greenhouse. So this one is actually on the south side of my grandparents' property, and it is actually made with eight millimeter polycarbonate and then um, redwood that I put a marine varnish on it. This one has been up and running for about 18 years, 17 years now. So it is my oldest actual greenhouse and it has held up amazingly well. I'll do a quick uh, walk around the outside. Uh, for a few years, I actually put in some bubble wrap and that act as um, extra insulation in the winter because Colorado winters can be awfully harsh. Um, so this is on the south side of the greenhouse. When I first built it, I only had a 40% shade cloth on um, two thirds of the greenhouse. So it went to right here um, because I would grow my Saracenia and fly traps on this side and Nepenthes and stuff that doesn't like quite as much sun on this side. So it's actually partially buried as you go up this hillside. So here I used um, cinder blocks and that um, keeps it very well insulated even in the winter because the cinder blocks are about four feet tall on this side. So this would be the uh, southeastern side of the greenhouse. And on this side, I have a swamp cooler so that is actually on a uh, humidus uh, thermostat. So once it gets over 85 degrees in this greenhouse, this uh, swamp cooler kicks on, pulls this nice cool wet air uh, from this side of the greenhouse in. And then if you saw the exhaust fan on the other side of the greenhouse, the very tip top of that side, it pulls it out. So I've actually had this swamp cooler that whole time and it still works perfectly fine. Um, usually every two years I replace the pads um, and that seems to work out about right. And then now I have a 60% green shade cloth across the entire top of it because uh, this has mostly intermediate Nepenthes and Nepenthes seedlings in here. So it's not a greenhouse. I'm super proud of what I'm growing in it right now. Most of the things are relatively small, so I don't do much on Instagram or Facebook in here. So you will get uh, one of the first video tours maybe I've ever done. So I'll talk about some of the things that I really like and don't like about this greenhouse. Um, being about uh, 13 to 15 years old when I was designing it, um, I have learned a lot since then. So at that time I had this brilliant idea, I would use glass um, counters and then I would be able to grow two layers of plants, which in theory that seemed like a great idea, but once you put an entire tray of plants on top, it doesn't matter if it's glass or if it's, um, I don't know, polycarbonate or wood, because the plants are so thick it wouldn't matter what it is. And then the glass doesn't drain as nicely. So truthfully, I would probably never use glass again, but I got this glass for free. And so it has held up really well over the years and it hasn't really been worth changing on this side. And, 
<coughs> Excuse me, guys. Also, the other thing I changed, when I first built this greenhouse, I laid really nice brick um, all across the bottom here. It did look super, super nice. I love the look of it. But because the water did not drain as well through the brick, it ended up getting quite muddy. And even though I had some like nice ground cover growing in between the bricks, it's not something I would recommend for me. Um, the greenhouse needs to be relatively wet to grow Nepenthes and it would just get really slick and kind of nasty. So a few years ago, I switched it over to this smallish um, pea gravel and that has actually worked really well. It makes it relatively easy to weed and um, the, the pea gravel will add some extra humidity to the air, especially if you spray it down um, in the morning. Um, here is actually a little pond that I dug into the ground when I first built this greenhouse. Um, right now, the only carnivorous plant I have in it is Utricularia gibba, but um, every once in a while, I'll put some Aldrovandra in here, and it is actually relatively deep, so I've thought about converting it over to grow um, Darlingtonia, because that's actually what I've done in a different greenhouse that I will show you a little later in my tour. Um, I completely stuccoed the whole side of this and that has held up really well. Um, have enjoyed that. I can spray that down and I would love if this Hoya will actually grow a little bit more onto the stucco and kind of cover this and give me a nice green wall. But when I cleaned it up a few years ago, it didn't really like it and I pulled some of it off, but we'll see how it looks in a few years. I also have a misting system in this greenhouse, which right now is set to on a timer and it goes off twice a day. So I'll kind of show you what it looks like. Just flip this switch this way. Uh, this comes on, it gives everything a nice mist. Um, I would say it waters every plant in here um, just enough. So I don't even have to come in here to water, I would say 90% of the days. Um, I have these nozzles right here. I believe they're two gallons per hour. So it's not a ton and it does create this really nice fine mist that when the uh, swamp cooler is on, it just covers the whole greenhouse and it just feels amazing. So like right now it is, I think 91 degrees outside in Colorado and really, really nice and relatively cool, probably around 80 in the greenhouse. So we'll just get that turned off. The swamp cooler in the winter, I will cover with this uh, little cloth here and that keeps the wind out and it keeps it from just being open to all the elements outside. Um, for heating this greenhouse, I have a combination of uh, water baseboards. So it's actually hooked up to the same baseboard that uh, heats the main house. Um, this, I have found, it doesn't quite provide enough heating for this greenhouse to keep it above 50 degrees um, when it gets down to about minus four, minus five outside. So then I have a backup, just um, space heater. So this one will only have to come on um, certain days when it gets super, super cold. Um, but I try and never let this greenhouse fall below about 55 degrees. Uh, the redwood has held up relatively well. Uh, I use this nice marine varnish on it. There are a few boards that I will probably have to swap out uh, here in the next year or two. Uh, the polycarbonate is still the original. Um, so even after 15 years, it looks uh, actually amazing. Um, I think especially because the 60% shade cloth has been on it for so long, that definitely helps the polycarbonate last a little bit longer. And it is the slightly thicker, I believe it's eight millimeter polycarbonate. So that adds a little more insulation, especially on the cold nights. Um, for electrical, this is on its own breaker. Um, just one breaker I find is, is enough, although it can only run one space heater because that's 1,500 watts. Um, but everything else, it has no trouble. The exhaust fan is up here, right in this high corner. 
Uh, I have just some shop lights in here. Um, these help if I wanna work in here at night, especially in the winter. Uh, I have a couple outlets um, that are underneath in a completely enclosed outdoor style um, fixture here. So they seem to work pretty good. Um, they're all on GFCI protected outlets. So just in case something were to trip, it would not um, give me too much grief. Um, I did have all these terrariums set up, uh, was growing seedlings and stuff in there but they ended up being more trouble than they're worth. So actually I just need to clean those out and see if anyone wants uh, some used terrariums. Uh, when I first built this greenhouse, I put in this really cool stainless steel sink um, just to kind of wash up afterwards. But truthfully, it was not worth it. I would have much rather had more room to grow all these plants than to have room to just uh, wash my hands. I would much rather just use this little uh, hose here, swap that, you turn it on, and good to go. Uh, that is one thing that it seems like a lot of people don't realize. When you're building a greenhouse, it is almost like you're building a small house. You have to have water, you have to have heat, you have to have electricity, you have to have cooling, usually lights, exhaust fans. Um, being in Colorado, we can get those extremely hot days, so up to about 100 degrees, where in a greenhouse, it would be literally 120, 130 degrees in no time, and that will be too hot for almost any carnivorous plant. And then during the winter, the coldest I've ever recorded since I've had this greenhouse up and running is minus 20 degrees. So we just have the wide range of everything. Uh, what helps me for highland plants is it cools down to almost 60 degrees every night of the year, even in the middle of July and August. So that is um, about 12 minutes on this greenhouse. Um, I'm going to move on to the second greenhouse I ever built, unless I think of something else to say real quick. But this greenhouse I could not have built without my dad and brother's help. And oh, this is the really cool thing. This giant window here, this was my room as a kid. So I could literally just climb out of my room and I would be in my paradise in my greenhouse. And so now this room I use to ship out a whole lot of plants, but uh, no longer live in that room. Um, <laughs> but as you can imagine, it was just a, a little heaven on earth for me. Uh, other than that, so here's the, the temperature sensor, so making sure that it's about the right temperature. That's slightly, it's about chest high, so a little above these um, seedlings here, and that seems to work out pretty well. When I first built this greenhouse, to talk my parents into building me a greenhouse, I had to say I would grow some vegetables for them. So <laughs> the first year I planted tomatoes and radishes and a whole bunch of vegetables underneath thinking that I would get a whole lot of uh, wonderful vegetables for the family. And then truthfully, none of them turned out all that well because they don't get near enough light underneath. And they actually had a terrible white fly problem. For some reason, the tomatoes and the white flies were crazy together. So then after that, I've never grown vegetables again in this greenhouse and said I'd sell a few plants and we'll go out and buy some vegetables. Okay, well let's uh, walk around here. I'll have a quick cut here so each video isn't too long to upload or edit. But let's go out. We can look around. I think I kind of showed you all this, how that this corner of the greenhouse is basically level with the soil. Then this one goes up. So then it's about a four foot uh, incline here. Um, I'll just walk up a little bit to the side and kind of show you the overview. So that is about what this one looks like. Um, I'll be taking some questions after, so let me know um, if you have any questions about greenhouse number one. Okay, on to the next one.